How to bulk load citations. So when you have a large batch of citations that you would like to link to a publication record in Arctos, using the citations bulk loader is a more efficient alternative than using the manage citations tool, which only allows you to link citations one by one to a publication. So to navigate to this tool, go to enter data, batch tools, bulk load citations, and you'll come to this screen. And this screen really just summarizes the different fields that are needed to populate your CSV bulk loader file. So to get that spreadsheet, go to the Get a Template link, and that will download your CSV file with all of these field headings already preloaded. And you'll notice this required column. Um, not all of the fields are required, so after you've input all your data and you find you haven't used a couple of the columns, go ahead and delete those before you load your spreadsheet. So as you're populating your spreadsheet, you'll need to indicate what catalog records you'll be linking to a publication, and you'll do that either by using the GUID, so that Darwin Core triplet, or a combination of GUID prefix and other ID. And that could be catalog number, that could be collector number, etc. Then you'll indicate the publication you want to link your records to, and you'll do that through the full citation or through publication ID. So here are some publications I'll be linking my specimens to. And if I click on one of these, I can grab either the full citation, so that will be uh, the text I'm just going to copy and paste into my spreadsheet. Or as an alternative, I can just grab the publication ID, which is this URL at the end of the URL, this number. And this is either or, so you'll either use a full citation column or publication ID, not both. Then you'll want to put in what type of publication you have. And if we go to Manage Citations, you can look at the controlled vocabulary here. So you may select that it's a, it's a type specimen. It might be something that's figured or a voucher. And just to point out, this screen is useful. This is the one by one citation tool, and if you are using the bulk loader for the first time, it's nice to have this open so you can kind of follow along all of these fields map to your field headings in your bulk loader. So then you can kind of easily see what, what the bulk loader wants you to put into each field. There are some sort of optional citation attributes like page number or remarks you may or may not add to your spreadsheet. And then this use existing accepted ID field. And for that, you'll either use a zero or a one, one indicating that you wanna use the current ID on your catalog record as the ID that you're linking your citation to, or a zero would indicate no, I actually want to use an invalid ID on the record. So for instance, in this record, if I put a one, I would be citing this name um, in, in the publication, whereas if I put a zero, I would be indicating that one of these two names is actually what's being cited in the publication. And so if I select this zero option, it does trigger these next three fields. And so, of course, um, if I'm not using the accepted ID, I'll have to put the scientific name that I want my citation to map to. I'm going to use this option here, which is, should the citation identification become the specimen's accepted ID? So zero meaning no, just map to the older identification, but I don't want to push that identification into the accepted slot versus one would actually push that previous invalid identification into the valid current ID slot. And if you do that, it again triggers sort of this suite of values. So um, it's kind of easier to see this here. So let me just show you for an example, um, that record we just looked at is a whiptail lizard. And so you can see here, so there is the accepted ID here. And so that would be 
in that first zero or one option, a one would indicate, yes, I want this, this value. If I selected zero, it would indicate, no, I actually want to point my citation at this unaccepted name. And then that would trigger a whole other suite of fields. If I wanted this to actually be bumped up as the new accepted identification, then I would populate all these other, uh, these other ancillary fields. So that kind of gives you a little overview, but let me show you an example. These are, this is a pretty straightforward bulk loader. So you can see here, I've got my GUID prefix and my other ID type and number. And I'm using three columns because I'm actually, uh, I'm actually linking my records via collector number rather than catalog number because that's how they're published. So I don't want to have to cross-reference and find the catalog numbers to which these belong. But I could have just used a GUID if I knew what the catalog numbers were right off the bat. I'm using the publication ID option. All of my records are cited as vouchers. I have also included page number and some remarks. And mine are all straightforward, so I'm just going to cite these as is using the valid ID. So I will save this as a CSV file and I'm ready to load. So I will choose my file here, CSV version, upload. And so it says my validation is complete. So it doesn't mean that the values I've inputted are validated at this stage. It only just means that my actual spreadsheet had the right format. So all the column headers looked right. There weren't weird spacing or formatting issues. But once I click view in a table, it's going to actually validate the data that's in my spreadsheet. And this status column is important. So all of my data look valid. So that means they're enter entered correctly. But this is where you would see error messages. And so you might get something like, the specimen number is not found, or there's missing data. And so in those cases, you might have a transcription error in your catalog number. And you can just reload your spreadsheet. You don't need to delete, do any sort of deleting of this table. And it will just overwrite with your newest version. Missing data would indicate that you maybe um, triggered one of those fields that then has other required values, like child values, and you didn't populate them all. So that those are kind of the, the most common errors you'll probably encounter. But if everything looks good, you can proceed to load. And it may or may not crank on this for a while. My spreadsheet had about 300 values, but uh, you can see that I says everything has seemed to work. So I can click View Citations. And so this is the publication I just loaded my specimens to. And if I scroll down, there they are. Um, and if I just click on any one of these, you'll see that the citations are right here already. And I did actually have um, citations that belonged, that were two different publications, but that um, were belonging to the same catalog record. And those came out nicely. So. That is how you bulk load citations. Thanks for watching.